Thank you to Danger Talk's presenting sponsor, DraftKings. Download the DraftKings app now and use code DANGERTALK. So let's talk about this bubble, though. You know, obviously, you know, uh, you being uh, the president of the NBA PA, just putting this whole thing together, which I'm fascinated about as much as you have going on, which is definitely interesting. I want to talk about, too, as well Is you know, the NBA is different than NFL in so many different ways. I think you guys do such a good job of the players really being the faces in the front of it, which I think we need to do more, honestly. And I want to learn from you, too, you know, in this process, because I think that you guys are, are such great leaders in the process and everything else with all the conversations you have. And so obviously COVID hits right in the middle of y'all's dang season, the midst of everything. And, you know, I know there's a, tons of calls. Everybody talks about the calls, but take me into those calls. Yeah. Talk, take me into those conversations because I know other, a few other NBA guys and talk to them too as well. But I'd love to know from you as you being the leader, the president of the whole processes, what were the few things that you were really focused on to making sure that happened for the players, but also for the whole process of it all? And then what were those conversations like? What, what was the feeling like? Also, Chris, I know you're married, but some of these guys are young, single NBA players. Couldn't you put a few girls in the bubble for them? <laughs> That's out. <laughs> That's out. <laughs> That's right. Right. Not on, unreal. Not on do it. Unreal. Not on do it. So <laughs> what's, what's crazy, what's crazy is, I mean, I'll take you into some of those calls and I'll tell you literally before I got on this call, I was on a call with Adam and uh, Kyle Lowry and the White Power and we were talking about potentially next season. You know what I mean? So it doesn't yeah. stop. And so first and foremost, as you talked about like our families, right? Like my wife, she's the one who, really is sacrificing because a lot of times she sacrificed me and my time, right? Because yeah, that's a good point. you know, like it's crazy. It's, it's anybody that's on these uh, executive committees or whatnot, it's not a paid position, right? So it's service, you know what I mean? It's service and that's why like I commend all the guys that we got in our league that's on our executive committee and through all of this stuff, our executive committee was amazing. But the guy who none of this stuff would have happened without is Andre the Dollar, right? Okay. So Dre, me and Dre been on the executive committee for years and the amount of conversations me and him had to have and trying to manage um, all the different players. Cause you, you think about it, you know, it's 450 players, right? So what may be good for this guy might not be good for this guy. What you have to do is have to have very tough conversations and hard conversations. And like I'm learning throughout the whole thing, but when everything happened back in March and we stopped playing, right? It was because of COVID, yeah. right? And now we're having these calls with the league trying to figure out how we can resume playing because of COVID. Then boom, George Floyd happens. And it's not just COVID anymore. It's COVID, it's social injustice, right? And so now you're battling, like, should we play, <laughs> right? And I'm sure you guys dealt with it too. It's not like, yeah, for sure. it's not can we play, it's should we play? And so in having all these conversations, what we ultimately decided was that if we stay home and don't play, aside from the financial ramifications, is that bubble will be the biggest platform that we can have. Right. Yeah. So however we feel on certain situations and subjects, we need to go there and say that and play at the same time because mental health, as you know, could you imagine going however much amount much amount of time without without playing football? <laughs> yeah, I mean I, I think about that because you bring up a good point because you think about not just you know the COVID part part of it and the financial part of it, that's one thing for sure. And you guys had already played, you know, the real out is you guys had played, what, a half your season, a little bit, yeah, you know, about a half, maybe a little bit more. Yeah. But, you know, for us, we hadn't even played a game yet. So guys financially have to go through this whole process of not, you know, what, what's that going to look like for not financially? And some guys, you know, there as, you know, and, and then that may not be an option, right? So that's a real thing to talk about, especially with players and families and decisions and things they make, they're responsible for. But then on top of that is, which you mentioned with George Floyd, you know, that happening right in front of our eyes, you know, and having to deal with that in the midst of trying to decide all these decisions that you guys had to do and, and try and get prepared. And then also as us as NFL, us feeling the same way. And how do we prepare for that? And I think you bring up a good point is, you know, how are we going to have the biggest impact? How are we, how are we going to get our voices out? 
what's that going to sound like? What's it going to be like? If we're, if we're not doing it, we'll, will it be as big of an, if we're not playing, will it be as, as big of an impact? Where all these major networks, you know, I think, you know, be able to force, you know, in a way force their hand to be able to talk more about the racial issues and address some of these things and not hide away from them. But us being in front and center in the middle of the conversation is so critical, right? Especially when you think about the NBA, some of the best players in the world, African-American black dudes who are going through it, been through it. Same thing in the NFL now. Times have changed in the NFL in so many different ways. Now more black quarterbacks being in the front of it all. And so it's a process of it all. But knowing that the best way is to having that microphone in front of us and being able to talk about the issues and actually having those conversations. And so when, when, when we go back to the moment of you guys actually deciding that, how, how did that all come about? Because for you guys, for the NBA, obviously, you know, NFL, we got over 1,600 some players or whatever it is. But for you guys, you know, having 450, roughly 450 players or whatever, you know, does it does it go all 450 guys on a call or is it just the top 20 guys? How does that work? Yeah, so it's it's crazy, man. So every team has a um, has a representative, right? Like a team rep, and there are certain calls that we did like that where the team rep would vote on on behalf of their team, right? So you talk to your team, figure out what your your team's vote is on whether you guys want to play or not. But we also did calls that was basically open. It was open. We sent out text to every player that's in our league and was like, look, we having this very informational call, uh, get on it. If you feel a way, say something. Now, the toughest thing about our league is that when those calls happen, everybody and their mom was on them and not, not players, right? So yeah. that's the hardest part. Like, I can't imagine having as many players as y'all have, but the hardest part is some of the conversations you need to have and you need to keep them in house. Right, but yeah. that's that's not always going to be the case, and it is what it is. You sort of used to it by now, but um, ultimately there were votes and talk to guys, and guys was like, okay, but everyone didn't always agree, right? But that's okay. It was guys who may have initially felt like, man, we 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 might not should play. We should do this. We should do that. And then it was guys who got to the bubble who actually came up and was like, yo, see, man. I originally didn't want to do this, but I'm happy that we did, right? And then yeah. even once we got to the bubble, and I know you didn't ask me about this yet, but everybody's playing and all these games are going on, but the Jacob Blake situation happened. Exactly, I was just about to ask you, you know, how'd you guys get through that? Yeah. With all the tensions going on. Yeah, that, that was probably one of the, the, the toughest things. And when I say tough, I just, like, I'm so grateful for, for everybody, like our players, like, the guys are so smart and so aware. And like you were saying, like as far as you guys and you, you guys learning or whatnot, but what we did is it started to really be in the, the negotiations and we understand, and we understand the business aspect of it. And we understand how strong our voice is. So uh, Michelle Roberts, who is our executive director, she is amazing. When I say amazing, she is a, you know, when you're a leader, sometimes you got to know when to let the other people you know, do it. Exactly. And think about it. Like, I think she's the first woman to ever lead a professional sports union, right? So yeah. as powerful and strong as she is, when we in some of those meetings, she like, y'all got it. <laughs> y'all got it. So we're grateful to her for empowering us to, to do that. But that, that <clears throat> room, when we needed to take a pause and talk, it was some hard, heated conversations, but it was necessary. Well, I, I think too, you know, we think about first of all, Jeff died. We need to have uh, Michelle on, on, on our, uh, you know, on our podcast. Maybe. Oh, yeah, we should, yeah. talk about it. We, should, we should, we should, yeah. we should, we should. But when you talk about uh, when you talk about everything that you're just talking about with all the racial tension, then you're in the middle of the playoff. Like I'm thinking about middle of everything going on, and the Jacob Blake situation happens, and the weight of that, and then the Bucks saying, "Okay, we're not going to play," and then everybody coming together. That was powerful. That was really powerful for all of us as players, too, in the NFL. And I think, you know, I, I think about all that pressure on you guys and, you know, the pressure on us as athletes, too, to, to you know, to, to do it the right way. To, what do we do here, man? Like, like, we need to do something about this. And I think, you know, I, I heard that you had had a cool conversation with President Obama. Maybe is that is that true? Did you, did you pick up the phone and get to talk to him at all? Yeah. <laughs> 
fortunately, I get to talk to him pretty often because he's been unbelievable sounding. Oh, no big deal. I get to talk no, to no, him. No, 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 no. I'm not trying to make it seem like he was the reason why we did anything or this or whatever. Just he's just been an unbelievable, like, mentor and helping just talk through situations yeah. other than just this one. What, what was unbelievable in this situation and what I think you and other guys in your league understand and what's a little bit di different is y'all play like once a week, right? Yeah. So the thing with the bubble is we had got we were playing every other day, right? So we playing every other day. So say we play on a Monday. Tuesday, you're basically getting your body ready to play on Wednesday, right? So there was like no real time to digest things that were happening. And like you was talking about, while you're in this bubble, you're away from your family, you are trying to be this amazing dad, you're trying to be a husband, you trying to manage your other family members, right? Trying to perfect your craft, you're trying to make a positive impact on social justice. And so everything is happening. And then you've got to go out here and perform at the highest level. And then they're throwing a microphone in front of your face asking you how you feel. Yeah. You haven't had time to think about it or what to right. how, how to process. And I think yeah. that was very real, real for us, but especially for you guys, because you guys are actually playing the games already. Yeah, you like you like, man, I don't know how to feel. And that's why we had to really take that like like reset. Like we had to slow down and stop. And we weren't worried about what anybody was saying on the outside. Like, what are y'all doing? Why y'all ain't playing? Listen, we are humans. <laughs> we are people first and foremost. And that's I think the part that I take away from those conversations more than everything is that you know what it's like. Like I watch when y'all games in, right? When y'all games over. Somebody kneel, time run out, everybody walk across the field and dap everybody up, right? Like you and the other quarterback, you be like, yo, good game, see you, hope you and the family well, boom. And that's it a lot of times, right? Yeah. And that's it. See, in the bubble, we got a chance to really talk. Because for us, over the course of the season, after the game is dap up, good game, kill I'll talk to you, I'll see you soon. I'll see you whenever, actually. But we got a chance to get in that room and, I mean, I don't know how y'all can do it, but I'm just... I'm just telling you, man, like at some point, that's when you really get down to God's purpose, right? Like, what do we want to do with all this power that we have? And we still got a ways to go, but that conversation in that big ballroom was was a huge starting point. When, when I think about yeah, you guys circling up, we, we had done, we, we were able to do that with our team, but we weren't able to do that with all 32. Um, but we had some heavy, heated conversations, emotional. I mean, I mean, just tears fall, falling and the people just talking about their scenarios and situations, all of us, you know, in so many different ways. And, you know, I think about just the weight of all of that, you know, and, you know, in the, in the process of you, know, you guys circling up in the meetings, I, you know, LeBron having to walk out of the meeting because it's a, a tension, emotional, everything else, all this stuff's going on, you know, and what, it, what did you kind of learn? What have you learned from Obama just in the, the times that you had spent together, you know, in the past or even in the midst of everything going on, yeah, hey, did you lean on any advice from him or from anybody else that you know, any other people in your life that really impacted your thought process to help lead and lead uh, the best way possible? Yeah, a, a lot of different people, a lot of different people. Um, I think, I mean, from from people, what I've learned and even experience, right? Because we always say like experience is the best teacher, no matter what it is. If, if I miss this shot or I make this pass or whatnot. If I do it a few times and it don't go the right way, then it's like, okay, I'm, I'm learning from it. So what, what I've learned the most in all these years is how important communication is, yeah. right? No matter how uncomfortable or hard the conversation is, what I've learned is that if I at least tell you how I feel, right? And you don't necessarily like it and we sort of get into it a little bit, at least we know where each other stand, right? And then we can work from there instead of, me talking about it behind your back over here and then you getting wind of it and now we get nowhere. So through the situations that were happening, you know, it was arguments and people would be like, oh, I'm done with it, I'm over. And I'm like, no, we, we can't. We're gonna, we're gonna stay here and talk about this. Thank you to Danger Talks presenting sponsor, DraftKings. Download the DraftKings app now and use code DANGERTALKS.